Hello, I'm Krista Bontrager. I'm the director for the Scholar Community Program at Reasons to Believe. And here to help me continue our discussion on the question, has the Bible been corrupted, is historian and theologian, Dr. Jeffrey Brashears. Welcome back, Dr. Brashears. Well, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to be with you. Uh, in our previous conversation, we kind of introduced the idea of the corruption of the Bible, a little bit about uh, the discipline of science called textual criticism. Uh, one of the things that we said is that most of these errors are known. They're fairly inconsequential. Uh, but what I'd like to probe a little bit deeper here is whether any of these corruptions actually do affect any essential Christian doctrines. That's really the bottom line, isn't it? And uh, as we inferred earlier, uh, no text scholar of the Bible, conservative or liberal, by the way, uh, no one doubts that there were errors in the copying and the transmission process of the New Testament. Uh, after all, these manuscripts were hand copied by human beings and the heir is human, of course. Uh, furthermore, no serious scholar doubts that later copyists uh, sometimes added to the texts, uh, mostly for clarification purposes. But the ult ultimate issue is the is the one that that you posed, and that is, uh, were any fundamental Christian doctrines, or is our understanding of Jesus Christ affected in this process? And we referred in our last se session to uh, Bart Ehrman, professor of religious studies at the University of North Carolina, probably the most quoted Bible critic today. And uh, according to Ehrman. Uh, he will he will argue that fundamental doctrines have in fact been affected by these textual variants, uh, as has our understanding of the character and nature of Christ. But his supporting evidence is speculative and and pathetically unconvincing. Um, the arguments of biblical skeptics like Ehrman uh, in no way alter our fundamental understanding of the life, the teachings, and the mission of Jesus, uh, or the, the meaning of Jesus's life. Uh, no serious allegation to the contrary has ever actually been proposed. Now, one of the things we also said in our previous episode <laughs> is that although we don't have any of the original autographs by the original authors, we have this, these copies of copies of copies but we can kind of reconstruct what those original autographs were by comparing these copies. Cause we have the wonderful providential benefit of having thousands of these copies, but how do we know that these manuscripts, what about them? Like how they were copied? What do we know about that process? How do we know if these people were careful in, in how things were, were done? Um, most scholars agree that er early Christian scribes, of course, would have treated the New Testament texts uh, with utmost respect. Uh, after all, these New Testament uh, texts were regarded as sacred scriptures themselves. Uh, so like their Jewish counterparts, uh, Christians believe that the writings that constitute uh, constituted the, the New Testament were divinely inspired. And furthermore, these were authoritative scripture. So uh, uh, Christian scribes would have taken utmost care to copy and preserve the documents as accurately as possible. Uh, now, human error in hand copied manuscripts uh, was, of course, a factor, as, as we've talked about before. But these errors can easily be compensated for, as you implied, in, in the sheer number of manuscripts that we have to compare and contrast. So e even Bart Ehrman, by the way, in his book, Misquoting Jesus, after uh, arguing that there are, quote, thousands of places in which the manuscripts of the New Testament came to be changed by scribes, even after that, Bart Ehrman admits that copyists were careful uh, to preserve the text and that the changes are overwhelmingly insignificant. Well, we've said many times in, in our conversations that it is important, it's vital for Christians 
to to learn about these issues, to dig a little deeper, to do some homework. Um, what benefit do you think the average Christian could actually get from learning more about how the Bible has been preserved? There is a fundamental uh, logical inconsistency in, in the arguments that are put forth by radical scholars like, for instance, Bart Ehrman. Uh, for instance, uh, if Ehrman is correct, that, that we can have no real idea of what the text originally said, then, then how would he actually know that these passages and other passages have been altered? Uh, now, despite um, the, the provocative and sensationalistic claims that scholars like Ehrman make, uh, his book, uh, not to mention his whole approach to biblical textual criticism, is quite underwhelming, to say the least. Uh, he utterly fails to prove his case. Uh, he never directly addresses, by the way, the question, who changed the Bible and why? And, and he certainly never demonstrates that changes in the texts in any way altered basic Christian doctrines or our understanding of Jesus Christ, which of course is of paramount importance. Well, I'm wondering if you have any final words, any words of wisdom to leave with us um, as we reflect on the importance of the issue of biblical textual criticism. As I wrote in my book, Introduction to Bibliology, ironically and certainly unintentionally, uh, scholars like Bart Ehrman have done the church a great favor, I believe, uh, because they have brought to the forefront, and in the process, they've helped to popularize such, uh, such a vitally important uh, field of study as biblical textual criticism. Uh, now, this, this is long overdue, and one lesson we can learn from this controversy is that the gap between the church and the academy needs to be closed. Uh, to paraphrase the Yale uh, church historian Yaroslav Pelikan, quote, the church should always be more than a school. We know that the church exists for far more than just education. So the church should always be more than a school, but the church, he writes, should never be less than a school. And so Christians, I think, need to be educated in some of these uh, tough and challenging apologetical issues of our day. Uh, instead of trying to shield believers from these kind of controversies, and, and in the process, reducing Christian education to the lowest common denominator, I believe church leaders uh, should be preparing Christians to actively engage these kinds of issues and do it intelligently and do it effectively. Uh, and, and finally, as I wrote, much good news emerges from the debates over biblical textual criticism because if this is the best evidence that skeptics can produce for deconstructing the Bible, then Christians can rest assured that we have a very solid foundation for believing that the Bible that we currently read is trustworthy and that it's been accurately preserved and transmitted through the centuries. And once again, I want to encourage all of our viewers to find out more, to dig deeper about the origin and inspiration of the Bible. You can check out Dr. Bashir's book, Introduction to Bibliology.